Hi there, and welcome to a playthrough of one of my favorite games of all time, Aladdin for the Sega Genesis. Let's just get into it. Okay, this is a lot of information to take in, I know. We've got Genie bonus level, Abu bonus level, Save Princess Jasmine 1-up, Restart Point, Spin These, Throw Apples, Health Meter, Extra Health! Uh, oh man, I can't believe Jasmine gave you an, a nice headshot. If she autographs it, it'd become more valuable once she kicks the bucket. That's a morbid joke to start off with, but let's go in Agrabah Market. So you might have noticed that I chose difficult difficulty. But from what I can tell, there's not a huge difference between it and normal. Uh, when you start the game on normal, you have three lives and five apples. Um, no, sorry. When you start the game on normal, <laughs> you have three lives and ten apples. And when you start the game on difficult, you have two lives and five apples. And everybody takes the same amount of hits, so hey, if, if you know about this game in any capacity, then why not play on difficult? You know? You can be like, yeah, I beat Aladdin on the Sega Genesis on difficult difficulty, and then flex your big dick. Whoa! So, you might have also noticed that apples are a weapon. You're armed with produce and a sword. You can kill guys with two throws of an apple. Uh, well, that guy with two, and the shorter, stouter one with one. Can you imagine, in real life, you could kill enemies by throwing produce at them? Meanwhile, these guys will grope you and steal your shit! Ah, oh, man! What the hell? I didn't ask for this. I know I have an open vest, a shaved chest, I know I look good, I look like Tom Cruise, but I wasn't asking for it. I wasn't asking for it. Ah. Uh. Anyway, so... But for real, Aladdin uh, was modeled after Tom Cruise, so... You expect me to believe that he's actually Saudi Arabian? Get the fuck out of here, he looks like a white guy. Then Prince Ali! And that's the level. Good timing on my part. So, the reason we picked up these genie heads are for these little bonus stages. They act as tokens. Yeah! Yeah! That was a good one! So now time for the Abu bonus level. I hope I don't embarrass myself, because I can beat this. I have before, I swear. Alright. When you've played this game as long and as, as many times as, as I have, you know what to expect. This seems excessive. Now, I've always wondered what these are. Are they barrels? Are they bread rolls? Cheese wheels? I don't know, but they look squishy and somewhat delicious. Get a nice running start. Here's a fucking long one. Yeah! Ah, oh, no. I thought I was done. Nice try. Well, at least they're courteous about it. 
Yeah, 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 yeah. Let's go to the desert. Remember this hot locale? <laughs> I love the song in this level. So, as I mentioned, this is... I'm trying to hit the snake with a fez. He's good looking. <laughs> and so's that camel. Uh, as I mentioned, um, this is one of my favorite games of all time. And one of the reasons for... What on earth? Uh, okay, a one-up just appeared. Is that normal? Okay, so back to what I was saying, one of the reasons I love this game so much is the, like, these little details right here. The background art, the character animation, but unlike the Lion King for Sega Genesis and SNES, which was also made by Virgin Interactive, this game does not suck butts. Um, whoa. Um, I mean, the, the life bar, admittedly, is a bit vague. You take about nine or ten hits before you die. And... Uh, the hitboxes are a teeny, teeny bit dubious. But, you know, you, you gotta... Nothing's perfect, okay? Also, there's a score in the upper right-hand corner. I don't know why this game has a score system. It's utterly, utterly pointless. But, uh, peace out, Iago. So I'm baffled about that one-up that showed up there. I've never seen that happen. Oh no! I died. Well, that's okay. It's all good. So, I guess Aladdin as a property is somewhat relevant again because of the <laughs> upcoming remake with Will Smith as the genie. It looks like an abomination. You know, I watched the remake of um, The Jungle Book recently, and you know, The Jungle Book's been remade countless times, and you know, it's, it's something that works for that kind of thing, even if it's not entirely necessary. Uh, but before I continue that train of thought, let me show you something cool. So with the goofy hieroglyphics right here, look upwards, jump, and you're propelled up here to the merchant. Very cool. Very cool. Let's buy some lives with our rubies, because what else are we going to do with them? So, there's also a... Lion King remake that's going to come out later this year, 2019. I also have a playthrough of, of The Lion King where I show off and complain about how much that game is bullshit. Um, click the link in the description. <laughs> but <laughs> why, Disney? I get it. You, you remake a thing with like a budget of a hundred million and then you make 500 million back. But think about the artistic integrity here, man. Ew. He's kind of gross. Anyway, <laughs> there is no need for a quote-unquote live-action remake of The Lion King, and no need for a remake of Aladdin. Like, and I hear the production has been a clusterfuck of problems. But. Aside from Will Smith looking frightening, admittedly, I don't know that much about it. All I know is this game is fucking great, and if you have a chance, you should play it. Riff Raff Street Rat Scoundrel, take that! So, I mentioned earlier that. There was also a, an Aladdin game for the SNES. Back in the day of the 16-bit era, it was the Battle of the Bits. Um, you had 
you know, your Genesis and the, and the Super Nintendo and their exclusives and what have you. Back in the day, you could have the same game, like so, Aladdin for a 16-bit console, but it would be completely different depending on what console you had. This game is totally different than the SNES version. Now, when I was younger and more of a shitlord, <laughs> I mean, I'm still a shitlord in, in many ways, but when I was younger, major shitlord. So, when I was younger, I would go on these huge tirades about how superior um, the Genesis version of Aladdin clearly was. Because, you know, it's... I was a Sega Genesis kid, you know, what other hill was I going to die on other than loving everything the Genesis put out? <laughs> and, and having never played the SNES version, I'm making these wild claims. And I still haven't played the SNES version, which is kind of... I don't know if it's criminal, but... I certainly can't go spouting out information uh, like I know a huge difference between the two versions. I mean, I've seen the SNES version. This guy is also a fan of the squishy cheese wheels. So we're gonna throw apples at him until he explodes. You know, this is kind of a strange game when you think about it. It's all good. They conveniently give you more apples down here. This is an awful lot like a... Yeah! He exploded! Holy shit, this is morbid. I mean, in the SNES version, Aladdin is like very acrobatic. He looks silly, like jumping around on doing handstands on dude's heads. But in this version, he's kind of a murderous dickhole, isn't he? Uh, by the way, remember this scene in the movie? Like, the two minutes we were in the Sultan's dungeon? Uh, how about we make it a level and make it the most annoying, obnoxious level in, in games? It's like, this level decides to throw at you, like, all the biggest annoyances in games. Bats as enemies, uh, what just exploded was a skeleton holding a bomb? Remember, remember these fine fellows? So, I know I was, I, I know I've been praising this game, but again, it's not perfect. And look up here! Sebastian, why are you in the dungeon? Ariel, listen to me. I should be under the sea, but instead I am in the prison because I was mistaken for Bill Cosby. Speaking of topical, uh... <laughs> the timing of that explosion was really great. It's like, <laughs> it's a skeleton with a bomb. Throw some fruit at him so he explodes before he, he, he before he can explode. <laughs> what the fuck is this? And these platforms. Also, I appreciate, like, the artistic merit of having, like, trying to give the level depth by having scenery in the foreground, but it's hard to fucking see sometimes. Especially when you need to land on these finicky-ass platforms and they're annoying as shit. And who designed this dungeon? Who did- who- do, what the hell is happening, man? Get me out of here. Why is the merchant in the dungeon? What'd he do? Well, I guess he might be selling illegal goods under the table. Or <laughs> under the carpet, as the case may be. <laughs> under the rug. <laughs> Whoa. I oh, don't know. I'm pretty happy with that. <laughs> I don't know why I jumped up there. It's like, you see a, you see a thing and you just gotta grab it. Okay. Here's... let's see if we can do this. I can't fucking see him! Now I can. This 
parts one. Spikes coming through the wall. Dubious hit detection at best. Dubious is one of my favorite words. Alright, time for an annoying fucking section. <laughs> Alright. I would say this is the most annoying level in the game. And it's st like, what happened there? I guess it could be worse. You have to jump on specific points. The click clacking of my controller as I jump, jump around. Jump around now, jump around. Fun fact, um, <laughs> the animators uh, watched MC Hammer's music video, You Can't Touch This, with his parachute pants <laughs> to get reference to animate Aladdin and his parachute pants, I guess. Can't touch this. Ah! Maybe the scary series in the Cave of Wonders, yeah, whatever. Cave of Wonders. Hit statues, thank you. The stage is also kind of annoying. Not as annoying as the previous one, but still. So you gotta hit these statues to open paths. You got fish, you got these statues. You got bats. I'm tired of bats getting a bad rep in games, man. Bats are cute and adorable. They're always enemies. Unless, like, they're the star. Like, Arrow the Acrobat. Anybody remember that game? I sure as heck don't. So, if you look right at these statues, they won't do anything. So, you, like, you have to walk, like, slightly ahead of them so you can make them explode like everything else in this game. Let's go grab that. We've got crazy... Jafar ghosts? Like, what the... This is creepy and mildly concerning. Oh, I think I've discovered uh, another difference in the difficulty level. The hearts do not heal for as much, it, it seems. Ah, no! Yeah, because in normal difficulty, I think the hearts heal, like, at least two hits. But it seems in difficult difficulty. Why not call it hard? Jesus Christ. Um, seems they only heal for one. Can, can you imagine going into a store and... and looking up towards the ceiling and puffing your chest out to purchase an item. Like you go to the Apple store and you stand in front of a, a MacBook and it's like, I wish to purchase these wares. I don't know why you'd make that noise, but it just seems appropriate for the situation. Here's a deceptively easy boss. It can be hard, but it's super easy. Just run back and forth and do this shit. This guy's creepy. I guess this guy's supposed to be like the the thing that Abu took uh, the ruby from in the movie. Thanks for the ride, carpet. <laughs> Look at him back there. Fucking fish. Alright, so you can go a different way, but it's faster to just go up the front of it to get to the lamp. And the level is now complete. Ah! 
time for another bonus level. Can I beat this one? Who the hell knows? Abu in the cave. Watch out, Abu. This is scary, man. This is scary. Mash, mash, mash. <laughs> okay. <laughs> when in doubt, mash! I did it! Yay! That one seems a lot shorter. Level complete. Do you get anything for it? Uh, other than the rubies, I guess not. Infidels! You know? That tiger. Kind of attractive. Now you will never again see the light of day! This level's pretty cool. And pretty stressful. We gotta get the fuck out of here. I don't know why those pixels at the bottom of the screen look fucked up, but let's go. As long as the game works, we gotta keep going. Yeah. It doesn't look like you can grab these, but you can. You have to jump, hold up, you can climb. Time for some Indiana Jonesing. music is intense and makes your butthole clench. Ooh. Fancy platforming, Aladdin. Uh oh. Uh, uh, uh. Oh god, I'm gonna die! Oh, thanks, carpet. Yeah! We escaped imminent death. No, wait, there's still more. Rug ride. So, this level is technically optional. Uh, what speedrunners will do, um is just hit the first rock that is in your way three times and then the game's like, yeah, you can you can keep going. But because I like this level and think it's cool and the music is dope, I'm gonna play it. And I have the pattern memorized, so it's all good. Yeah. Just listen to this tasty jam. So I collect apple slices. Think it yeah, down. It's like which way? Either way. Mm -hmm. Oh, that wave behind me is getting bigger and closer. Ah! Where's it gonna be? Up there. the lamp. Yeah! With a friend like me. So check this out in the background. Uh, you can see 
a Model 1 Genesis back there. Hee <laughs> hee. Very neat. Personally, I had the Model 2 growing up. Uh, I got, when I was four years old, one of my earlier memories, um, for Christmas, I got the Model 2 bundle that had Sonic 2 with it. I'm pretty sure that was a thing, but that was the year I got my Genesis for Christmas in the good old year of 1992, and then throughout 93, uh, a bunch of games that I'm now playing on this channel uh, released, and like this one. This came out in 93. Um, Sonic Spinball. Uh, my dad would uh, play games too. He loved this game. He loved Sonic. Uh, he'd come home from work uh, and not even change out of his dress shirt and tie and just sit down and play Aladdin and Sonic. We played games, uh, what the heck is happening? <laughs> we played games a lot together and I, I would want to play games for him, uh, like, uh, like have him watch me play games, but he would always fall asleep on the couch behind me and I would get so mad fun memories. And now I play games for people on the internet, so... And I don't know if they're falling asleep. Bum, 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 bum. Look at these tiny hands. That was a nice hand pattern. <laughs> playing it a little bit safe. Look, like, you think it's gonna grow bigger, but no, they troll you and make you land on this tiny damn hand. But it's all good, because we're done. Ideally, I guess in a speedrun, you'd want to immediately hit Jafar. And now we're at the Sultan's Palace, the second to last level in the game. <laughs> oh! Gosh, that would be an embarrassing faux pas to just have your pants fall down spontaneously. Why did- <laughs> I just noticed. The fish has a fez, too! These animals are copying Aladdin's fashion sense. Mash B, mash B. Carpet, you're a little drunk. Oh, he gets drunker later. Come on, here. <laughs> Carpet, like, there is no rhyme or reason to this. And I'm just <laughs> swinging my sword around like a madman. Yeah, like, whoops. Why get all up close and personal when you can just throw apples at guys? <laughs> Apples. Super handy. This would be one of Applejack's favorite games. You know, I don't appreciate the use of apples as a weapon, but you gotta... You can't deny that they sure are efficient in this, uh, here Vigi game. Carpet, you're seriously, seriously drunk. Oh! I wanted to get that help. Man, playing on difficult difficulty. I gotta swing my sword just in case Iago's fat ass gets in my way. 
I'm sorry, Iago. I didn't mean to insult you. Oh, I can just jump from here. That's cool. So look at look at the uh, the toys that the the Sultan has. You can see the beast, just like in the movie. Well, good thing I got a checkpoint. Why do I? <laughs> Abu looked like he was gonna shank some biatches. I don't need all this shit, but <laughs> just like in real life. I don't need it, but purchasing an item makes me feel good. <laughs> How did that hit me? Anyway, now we've got a boss fight with our good buddy Iago, voiced by our good buddy Gilbert Gottfried. In a weird way, I think Gilbert Gottfried is really cute. <laughs> There's a nice documentary about him on Hulu that goes over his life and career and now he's a big family man. He's got his wife and two kids and he's an adorable dad. I'm a sucker for adorable dads. This has been a little more challenging on difficult difficulty. <laughs> Go figure. I'm sorry, Iago! It's okay, he's still alive, even though he exploded. Always with him. Yeah! yeah. Fuck you, man! I'm tired of this shit. Alright, distracted by Iago, Aladdin recovers to find the lamp is missing. Yeah, yeah, blah, 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 blah. Jafar's got it. We're at the last level. Ooh, Jafar, I gotta say, you made this place look really tacky. <laughs> Did he hire an interior decorator to come in here and make it even more garish and foppish? I bet he did. Ooh, ha ha! All my efforts. Isn't it kind of gross that those healing hearts have little goatees? <laughs> I never thought about that before, that that is kind of gross. <laughs> That's weird, isn't it? Oh, goodness. Alright, time for another drunken rug ride. Ah! Did you see that? My apple will just bounce right off. Oops. Yeah, and you can use their own knives against them. Ah, damn it, Iago. See, he's still alive. <laughs> Figure that one out. No! Little spikes. Let me, let me, let me jump off. Just in case. I mean, I'm pretty competent at this game, but I'm not used to playing on difficult difficulty. <laughs> you kind of get into a pattern with your old ways. 
with the ways that you're used to. Alright, we are approaching the end. First, uh, our last drunken carpet ride. Before he drops us off into the boss room. Now, another another criticism I will give of this game is that the final boss in the SNES version is much more epic. Especially when he turns into a snake. So this is wow shit. So this is an an optimal strategy I have crafted as a youngster because you're fighting you're fighting against like his tractor beam here. So find find yourself like a good pattern. Ow. To. turn into a snake shortly. So, as I mentioned, my dad used to play this game, and now he's a snake. Okay. So here's the pattern. <laughs> Gotta do this, dodge the fire. So my dad was never able to beat Jafar, but once I figured out how to, Guess who <laughs> rubbed it in his face? Be like, hey, guess what? I beat Jafar. And he was like, no way! <laughs> Same thing happened when I beat Sonic Spinball for the first and only time in my life. He was like, man, I'd always get up to Robotnik, but I never could beat him. I'm like, I know, the game's hard. It's hard as shit. Alright, we should be almost done. Maybe one more hit. Mm, no. Uh, whoops. Maybe a couple more. Yeah! Time! And that's the game. And there you have it. We threw... Apples had a snake until it blew up and we didn't even see it on screen. And now Aladdin and Jasmine just blah, just grab her and yeah, playing tonsil hockey. Ew. Ugh. I just burst myself out with that phrase. Let's let the credits roll. VP of production produced by Rob Alvian. Neil Young, Seth Mendelssohn, oh, I'm sorry, David Fries, and Virgil the Cat! If you made it this far, I'm impressed, but I do appreciate you watching. Stay tuned for more in this series of Sega Genesis Madness, where I go back and play games from my childhood, uh, and some are a lot better than others. moment when the song you play for the credits ends up being too short, so you have to repeat the song. Very awkward. Gotta fly! Alright, I guess I gotta fly out of here. Again, thanks a lot for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace out! <laughs>